All right, welcome back. So our goal for today's lesson is gonna to be to work on our restaurant activity uh, view. And the goal here is eventually to have this display a lot of interesting information about a single restaurant. Um, we added this activity when we initialized MV2, but uh, currently I think it's completely blank. Yeah, okay, so, so we're gonna be adding some code here. Um, but the first thing we have to think about is just simply, how do we even get this activity to run? So we talked a little bit before about how when our app starts up, it starts with the main activity. That's part of the Android manifest. Um, but if I want to switch to a new activity, how do I do this? And to do this, we use this idea in Android of what's called an intent. Um, and an intent is what I use to start a new activity, essentially. It's the Android concept for uh, launching a new activity from an existing activity. Um, we also need a place to put this. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, the right place to put this is actually in the on clicked uh, callback. So we talked last time about callbacks. We worked a little bit about on the on query text change callback, which is called when the text in the search bar changes. But there's another callback that we're going to use here as well. And that's a callback that's uh, provided, uh, uh, that's passed to our list adapter. The idea is that the list adapter allows us to do something when items in the list are clicked. And what we want to do is we want to launch that new activity with details and more detailed information about that, um, that, that, that restaurant. All right, so first of all, let's just sort of convince ourselves that this runs and that it has information about the activity that, that we're going to click on. Uh, so I'm going to do log.d, uh, I'll use main activity, um, and then I'm just going to log oh, restaurant.id. Um, and I need to import logs, so I'll do this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and run. Oh, by the way, do, you know, don't continue uh, on here until all your uh, previous tests are passed. And I should have said that when I started. So you know, I'm expecting that you've completed the test that parse the preferences from the CSV file, and that you also complete the client server component of the project so that you're able to retrieve that information uh, and use it in, in your app. Okay, so let's go over here and we're gonna do run app uh, on my emulator. Uh, I'm gonna fire that up, open this guy so I can see it launching. Um, and then I'll grab the log cat tag, is that the tab, because that's what we wanna do. And I'll put main activity in here. Um, it hasn't started yet, it may take a minute. Um, so, you know, what we're doing right now is just, I'm just showing you when this callback runs and then the next thing we'll do is we'll we'll try to uh, respond to this by starting up that new activity that we created in the other file. Um, all right, so uh, so let's do this. And I see if I click on this now, you can see at the bottom I'm seeing debugging information, and I'm seeing the that unique ID that we assigned to each activity. Okay, so this is working. So let me show you how to how to use uh, the Android intent system. So I'm going to call this. Uh, launch restaurant activity and I'm going to set it equal to an intent and there's two I need to import this class there's two things that I pass to this the first is sort of a reference to the calling context which is this activity and then the next thing I need to tell it is what activity do I actually want to start and here I use this somewhat uh, strange uh, syntax here which is this essentially gives me a reference to the class so it's telling Android I want to launch this class, and this class is an activity, and so that will cause it to start up a new screen, essentially, that will be able to display new information to the user. Um, all right, now, by creating this intent, nothing happens yet. I need to call this method that I have access to called start activity and pass it the intent. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it that launch restaurant activity. Okay, let's try this. Uh, so I'm gonna restart. The app in my emulator and now what i'm hoping will happen now the restaurant activity is still blank so i'm not expecting to see anything it's just going to show me a blank screen that's what i think will happen but i am expecting it to start now when i click on a restaurant uh okay so let's click on a restaurant and uh-oh okay something bad happened it looks like the app crashed now you know one of the things that the mp is designed to start to familiarize you with is the process of working with more complicated pieces of code and more complicated systems. And when you do that, it's normal for like stuff to break and go wrong and to wonder why and to get these big ginormous chunks of output from your system and be like, what happened? I don't know, like how am I supposed to make any sense of this? Um, but sometimes some 
kind person out there who wrote this has done something helpful for you. Sometimes they've left you some information. So here at the very top of this stack trace that tells me how I got to the point in the code where something went wrong is this, um, is this helpful error message. It says, unable to find explicit activity class. Have you declared this activity in your Android manifest.xml? Ha! It's, it's a clue about what's wrong here and why things crashed. And indeed, if I go over here and I open up the Android manifest, now we talked about this a little while ago, but this file is sort of metadata about the entire app. And it contains a lot of information that Android uses to figure out things like what to call the app, what icon should it use in the menu and things like this. But in Android, if we want an activity to work, we have to declare it in this file. And so you'll see that I've already declared one activity right here, and I can declare another below it. So I'm going to open up, I'm going to use this activity tag. And what I need to do is this is, it's very helpful. It opens this up for me. Um, and I'm going to do activities.restaurant activity and just close that tag. Now you may wonder why does this look different than this? And the reason is this is a shorthand where it starts with the package name that's declared up here at the top of the manifest. And then it just appends this. And so if I want to kind of make things look a little bit more consistent, I can just change this to, to use that shorthand syntax as well. All right, so let's try this again. Now I'm hoping that I'm actually gonna see a blank screen. It's like all the work we go to just to see a blank screen uh, on, on, on the display, right? It's like thrilling. Um, okay, cool, so let's try it. Click on Alexander's Steakhouse, blank screen. Okay, if I go back, what happens? I'm back at the menu, uh, pretty cool, all right? And just to get it as a last step to convince ourselves that this is actually working, let's go over here and put some code in on create in our restaurant activity um, to make sure that this is happening. Now, uh, if I start typing on create, um, you're, you're gonna see, now, now this is where you can get into trouble. So you better be really careful here. There's, there's two different overrides here. There's one that takes two arguments and there's another one that takes one argument. And I'm telling you this because I got in trouble here. If you use the one with two arguments, you're gonna be very confused because it doesn't run. You want the one with a single argument. This is the correct one to override. Um, and now let's put some logging in here. So we're going to do log.d. Uh, we'll use a restaurant activity and we'll just say started. Oh, no semicolons, Jeff. This is coming. Boom. Okay. Let's rerun this and see what happens. Um, so now we're expecting to see this code. I mean, we're just confirming that the transfer, like, you know, because blank screens can mean a lot of things, but now this will really make sure that I understand what activity is running, right? There's been a new activity launched uh, and, I, and I wrote it and it's code that I have control over. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing this and I see started. Um, now I go back, started. Um, there's a couple of other things that are being shown here too because they're matching that text, but that's okay. Um, so I see this and now I know that I'm in code that I wrote over here on the, the restaurant activity. All right, so that's step one, right? So now we have some understanding of how activities get launched in Android. There are certain activities that get launched by the Android system, like the main activity for our app when the app starts up. But then once the app is running, it can switch between different views and different screens by using intents and telling Android, okay, here's when I want this to happen. In this case, when the user clicks on something, I use the intent to launch this new activity Currently it's not doing anything, but we're gonna add code here to make this new activity more useful as we go.